I said I'd do some tests on the performance of the five-year plan software that I released earlier in the week. I've done that and I can now give some rough results of the performance it has and its computational complexity as a function of the number of industries that you put into your planning model. In order to do this, I first constructed a software package that would build model input-output tables which have the correct statistical properties of real input-output tables. Myself and one of my students have previously demonstrated that real input-output tables have a large number of zeros in them, that their complexity in terms of non-zero elements grows as n log n. That is to say, a row in the table will tend to have log n el non-zero elements in it, where n is the number of industries. Now, by using that rule, you can construct random input-output tables that have the right statistical properties. And you can construct them of varying sizes in order to test how the planning software will do on different sizes of disaggregated economic models. OK, suppose I want to um, run a planning model on a 20 industry economy for one year. The, my shell script that does this would say test run 20 for one year. Twenty sectors, one year generates four hundred fifty four equations and takes point three two of a second for the linear solver to solve. We can have a look at the equations. Sorry, we can look at look at the flows. So there you see a um, set of industries. I've just given them simple names, P0, PE, up to P19 for product 0 to 19. Um, you can see there are lots of zeros and some non-zero elements linking the different industries together. And the number of non-zero elements is proportional to the logarithm of the um, number of industries which we've shown is an empirically observable trend in disaggregated input-output tables. OK, so what sort of performance do we get? Well, running on one-year plans, uh, I, I tried running it from um, 32 to 256 industries. And the longest time it took was 105 seconds for a plan with 256 industries which came down to just under 8,000 equations. If we look at how the runtime relates to the number of industries, if we plot the number of industries along the bottom here and the running time in seconds up here on the log-log scale, we see a straight line on the log-log scale, which indicates a power law performance. Power law performance of order 3, which indicates that LP solve is taking roughly the time it would take to invert a matrix of order n in order to get the answer, um, which is not necessarily the most efficient type of um, algorithm you could use, but it is at least polynomial in complexity and gives tractable results for problems of this size. It would not be tractable for a highly disaggregated economic model. For that, we will have to uh, use some kind of iterative or Jacobi solver um, to, to get a, 
a tractable answer in one period. For for multi-year plans, that's these are two-year plans in red, five-year plans in blue. The time increases because the number of equations goes up. A five-year plan has roughly five times as many equations as a um, a one-year plan, and the slope of the trend lines is the same in all cases. It's roughly three. So in all cases, the the problem grows as n cubed, roughly. This is still tractable. Bear in mind that I'm running this on a 50 pound computer board, um, which has basically got a mobile phone chip in it. So I'm using a mobile phone chip and only one processor on the mobile phone chip because it turns out LP Solve is not multi-threaded. So one processor on a mobile phone chip and you're able to get useful performance for doing macroeconomic models of input-output tables at the level of disaggregation that you can empirically download from published input output tables.